For this lesson, it's really important that you saw lesson 6.4 and 6.7 because they led up to this lesson and they're linked in the description. This is 6.8, compare and order fractions. We can put fractions in order from least to greatest or greatest to least by comparing them to benchmarks like zero, half, or one, using a common denominator, or comparing denominators when they have common numerators. Using half as a benchmark, we learned that in video 6.6, we can quickly decide if a given fraction is less than or greater than half to compare it to another fraction. Using common denominators, we can compare and order fractions by the amount of their numerator. We learned about this in the last video, 6.7. The lowest numerator is going to equal the lowest fraction, and the greatest numerator will equal the greatest fraction, that's when they have the same denominators. They have common denominators. When fractions have a common numerator, we can compare and order fractions by their denominators. The lowest denominator is the greatest fraction. A small denominator like this 3 compared to that 4, this small denominator represents larger equal parts. We learned about that also in video 6.7, which is linked in the description. Locate and label two-fifths, one-tenth, and seven-eighths on the number line. We have a number line and we mark a zero, half for the halfway mark, and one. And we can compare each of these fractions to a half. We can put them on this side if they're less than half, and on this side if they're greater than half. So let's do the two-fifths. We think, well, two-fifths is less than half because two is less than five, one-tenth is close to zero-tenths as a zero. That's pretty far from one-half. Five-tenths would be one-half, wouldn't it? Because five is half of ten. And seven-eighths, well, that's almost eight-eighths as one whole. Remember when the numerator and denominator are the same, it's equal to one whole. We have all the parts that it was split into. So we think, well, two-fifths, this 10, if we compare the two-fifths and the one-tenth, 10 is a multiple of 5, this denominator. And if we multiply this denominator times 2 and this numerator times 2, we're going to get four-tenths. So we can compare four-tenths to one-tenth, and four-tenths would be greater. One-tenth is close to zero-tenths. We can compare it to a half which is not one of the fractions, but we are comparing it to the benchmark half. We know 5 tenths would be half, so this is less than half. And they both have a 1 for a numerator. They're both unit fractions, and this one has the lower denominator, so its parts are bigger. So 1 tenth is less than 1 half as a benchmark. We can do 7 eighths and 1 half as a benchmark. We think, well, 4 is half of 8, so 4 eighths would be half. And this is 7 eighths. This is close to 8 eighths, isn't it? So this is greater than half. So we know on this side, we would have 1 tenth. And we know this is less than half, four-tenths, and we know that two-fifths is less than half, so it's going to be on this side. We can also see it's greater than one-tenth, so two-fifths would be over here. We know seven-eighths is greater than half, so it's going to be on this side somewhere. And Because one-tenth is very close to zero-tenths, it's going to be very close to the zero, so it might be somewhere around here. And two-fifths is going to be closer to the half, so it might be somewhere around here.
And we know the 7 eighths is going to be over here because it's close to 8 eighths, which is one whole. So it's going to be around here on the number line. And the fraction that is the greatest distance from 0 is the greatest fraction. It just means that the fraction that is the farthest away from 0 is the biggest fraction. This is close to 0, so that's the smallest, the least fraction. And this one's a little less than half, and this one's close to 1 because it's almost 8 eighths. And 1 tenth is less than 7 eighths. Compare 6 eighths, 1 fourth, 6 tenths, and 7 eighths. And we begin by comparing each fraction to half as a benchmark. We look at them, we look at the denominator and the numerator. Half of 8 is a 4, so 4 eighths would be half. This is 6 eighths, that's greater than half. And we can put it in a list of fractions greater than half. 1 fourth, half of 4 is a 2, so half would be 2 fourths. This is only 1 fourth, so this is less than half. We can put it in a list of fractions that are less than half. We look at 6 tenths. We know half of 10 is a 5, so 5 tenths would be half. This is 6 tenths, so that's greater than half. 7 eighths is almost 8 eighths. It's almost 1. 4 eighths would be half, and 7 eighths is greater than that, so this is also greater than half. Now, if you're confused about what I'm doing here by making comparisons to half, you need to see video 6.6 where we learned about benchmarks. So we can see the fraction with the least value is the one that is less than half because the rest are greater than half. The fraction with the least value is one fourth. And we can mark this fraction on a number line. We have a number line with zero, half for halfway, and one whole. And if we split this into four equal parts, we would have a split here and a split here. To have one, two, three, four equal parts, this would be one-fourth right here. Now we've got one of them marked on the number line. We need to do the rest. We have our list of fractions greater than half. These are the three fractions that we need to put on the number line still. So we can compare 6 eighths to 6 tenths and 7 eighths. Well, 6 eighths and 6 tenths have a common numerator. So we can look at their denominator to see which one has bigger parts. And the one with the smaller number, the least amount, is going to have the greater size parts. So 6 eighths, 8 is less than 10, so 6 eighths is going to be greater than 6 tenths. When we can compare 6 eighths and 7 eighths, they have a common denominator. When they have a common denominator, we look at which one has the greatest numerator, and that would be 7 eighths. So 6 eighths is less than 7 eighths. 6 eighths is greater than 6 tenths, but 7 eighths is greater than 6 eighths. So we know 7 eighths is the greatest, we know it would be over here somewhere close to 1 because 8 eighths is a 1. We know the other two fractions, the 6 eighths and 6 tenths, are going to be greater than half, so they're somewhere over here. We know that 6 eighths is greater than 6 tenths. So 6 tenths would be on this side and 6 eighths would be on this side because it's greater than 6 tenths by using their numerators and denominators and benchmarks, we can figure out where they belong on a number line. Comparing 6 eighths, 1 fourth, 6 tenths, and 7 eighths, we can locate them on a number line, then write them in order from least to greatest. We know the one that's closest to 0 is the least, so 1 fourth is the least. We know 7 eighths is closer to 1, so it's the greatest. And we know the order of these two, which are greater than half. We have a one-fourth, then a six-tenths, then a six-eighths, then a seven-eighths. We know 
1 fourth is less than the 6 tenths, the 6 tenths is less than the 6 eighths, and the 6 eighths is less than the 7 eighths. By using the number line and common numerators and common denominators and benchmarks, we were able to put them in order from least to greatest. We can also order fractions by giving them a common denominator. We learned about that in video 6.4. To compare and order these same fractions, 6 eighths, 1 fourth, 6 tenths, and 7 eighths, we list the multiples of 8, 4, and 10. We have an 8 here and an 8 here, so we can just list the multiples of 8 for both of those fractions. We list the multiples of 4 and 10, and we can see their denominators can meet at 40. So that's going to be the common denominator. We have 6 eighths, and we ask ourselves, 8 times some number is 40? Well, that would be 8 times 5. 6 is going to get jealous if we don't multiply it by the same number, so we need to multiply it by 5. That means our equivalent fraction to 6 eighths is going to be 30 fortieths. We do the same thing for 1 fourth. We ask ourselves, 4 times some number is equal to 40? Well, that would be 4 times 10, and then the numerator is going to want it want to be multiplied by 10 also, isn't it? So the equivalent fraction to 1 fourth would be 10 fortieths. Do you notice that they both just have a zero over them and then it looks like a 1 fourth, but they each have a zero? See how that happened? We do 6 tenths. We say 10 times some number is 40. That would be 10 times 4. And 6 wants to be multiplied by 4 also. 6 tenths has 24 fortieths as an equivalent fraction. We do the 7 eighths. 8 times some number is equal to 40. We know that's 8 times 5. And the 7 wants to be multiplied by 5 also. So the equivalent fraction for 7 eighths would be 35 fortieths. Now that we've given them all the same denominator, we can just put them in size order by looking at the numerator. Which one has the smallest numerator? We have 30 fortieths. We have 10 fortieths. We have 24 fortieths. And we have 35 fortieths. The lowest numerator is the lowest fraction. It's the least fraction. That would be 10 fortieths. That would be our first one here. And its equivalent fraction is 1 fourth. So we'll put 1 fourth here. So that one's done. We look for the next lowest number. We have a 30, a 24, and a 35. Well, that would be the 24 fortieths, which is equivalent to 6 tenths. So we're going to put 6 tenths here. So now that one's done. We look for the next number. And 30 is lower than 35, so 30 fortieths would be next. We'll put 6 eighths here. Now that one's finished. We know 35 fortieths is the last one. That would go here, but we need to write the equivalent fraction, 7 eighths here. So we gave them common denominators to help us put them in order, but when we list them, we need the original fraction as the answer because we don't write the equivalent fraction as the answer. We don't write 10 fortieths or 24 fortieths. We need to put those original fractions in order. So those are the ones we list. Now take a look at this. We have 1 third, and it's less than 4 tenths, and it's less than some number with 6 as a denominator. We need to write a numerator here that makes the statement true. We can use half as a benchmark, or we could give them common denominators, but half as a benchmark will be faster because we can use mental math. One third, we know that that's one of three parts. That's less than half. We know five tenths would be half, and this is four tenths, so that's less than half. So for these to be lef less than this one, we could just make this one a half or greater than half. We could make it 3 6 because that would be equivalent to half. We could also have chosen 4 6, 5 6, or 6 6. 
I decided to go with 3, 6, but any of those answers would be correct. 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6, 6. Now, looking ahead to fifth grade, when you see these symbols here, a mathematical statement like this that contains the symbols less than or greater than or even a not equal to symbol, they're called inequalities. And to read a three-term inequality, we start in the middle. So here's a term, here's a term, here's a term. They're separated by the, by the less than or greater than signs. So we have three terms here. We start reading in the middle. We would read this as four-tenths is greater than one-third and less than three-sixths. So again, you're going to be learning this in fifth grade. I just wanted to give you a heads up. We start reading in the middle, and we say four-tenths is greater than one-third, but less than three-sixths. See? Those are inequalities. So a quick wrap-up of what to do to compare and order fractions. If the fractions have common denominators, these both have a six, we compare the numerators. And the greater fraction will have the greater numerator. 4 6 is more 1 6 parts than 3 6. And if the fractions have common numerators, we compare their denominators. The greatest fraction will have the lower denominator because the parts are bigger. Two of these 1 3rd pieces is a lot more than two of these 1 6th pieces. These are smaller parts. These are larger parts because the denominator is smaller. And if the fractions don't have common denominators or common numerators, we can compare them by giving them common denominators or by using half as a benchmark. So that's the end of Chapter 6. We're going to be moving on to Chapter 7, and we're going to learn in 7.1 how to add and subtract parts of a whole. I hope I see you there, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.